best. I think, and it's tough to play in Denver, man. I'm going the Broncos. Yeah, that was my third pick. Uh, I have Denver getting the two and a half. I think Yahtzee. it's a different team at home. Um, giving two and a half, rather, excuse me. I think they're a different team at home. Uh, Oakland had a tough game last week, or a tough showing, rather. I didn't think it was going to be a tough game in Washington on Sunday night, and they just looked really bad. Um, and Cooper's not been catching balls, and Crabtree is hurt. Uh, Denver's defense is, of course, very good, so I'm going to take the Broncos minus two and a half also. Hmm. That's... Do you, you know what? I, I don't, No, I don't want to take the Monday night game. Because I personally think the Redskins are going to cover the spread, but I am not. I am not going to cheer for the Redskins. I can't do it, being that I'm, you know, an NFC East guy. So I'm going to go ahead and say, no, that's the other. Mm. This is I, now I'm on the spot because my two things were the, I was thinking the Eagles and the Redskins, and I don't want either of them to to win. Oh, so about what, right, just, yeah, trying to get them games the right. Yeah, but my heart and my brain often work separate from each other. So I'm going to say the Jaguars go buck wild in the Jets and cover the spread of three and a half. I have no faith in the Jets whatsoever. Bilal Powell, who I thought was a decent, at best, running back. They don't even trust him to run the ball, and they have, like, their seventh-string dude running. Um, really? I haven't, I haven't watched any Jet games, to be honest. I just know Forte's hurt, so I'm expecting Powell to have, like, a, a lot of touches uh, in this game. I was thinking the same thing, and I was listening to um, Sirius, and they were saying the guy behind Forte in the depth chart they think is the best runner on the team. Oh, I don't even know who that is. Me yeah, neither. That up. I'm going to look it up right now while you're doing this, but go ahead. Oh. Well, that's it. I made all my picks, so. You went through? Oh, yeah. I mean, we can still, you know, buy time until you look up who that running back is. Yeah, I'll wait, keep going. That's fine. I'll just keep, I'll just keep talking. No what surprised you last week in the NFL? What surprised me last week in the NFL? The Oakland game was very surprising to me. I didn't, I expected them to win that game, and they just looked awful. They only even scored a touchdown based off of a turnover that they got deep in Washington territory. That was pretty surprising to me. Um, you know, a bunch of 0-2 teams got some wins. Um, the Saints went into Carolina and got a win. The Jets uh, won their game at home. Uh, Green Bay almost lost at home to Cincinnati. They went to take overtime to do that. You know, Houston was on an 0-2 team, but they were going into New England and almost pulled off a win there, um, nearly knocking me out of my survivor pool. So there was a lot of crazy games last week. Uh, there were other games, too, I think that people you know, in survivor pools got wrong. I think people had Miami beating the Jets. That didn't work out. People had Pittsburgh beating Chicago. That didn't work out. Yeah. So there's a lot of crazy stuff that happened last week. There's a lot of games that were closer than expected. Explain to me something about... Oh, Elijah McGuire is the third string uh, Jets running back. who's probably going to break out for a crazy amount this week. Larry Fitzgerald's what? 65, 70 years old? I think so. Yeah. I I don't know how he does it, man. He's he's unbelievably cold. Like, what, 13 balls against the Cowboys last Almost week? Almost cost me a fantasy matchup. I was up by 30.5 points going into the Monday night game, and the, my opponent only had Fitzgerald. I ended up winning by, like, three. It was pretty crazy. Well, it was PPR? Half point. Half thank point. God. Oh, thank if God. Wasn't, if it was point, you were blown out. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. That game, that was a tough game for me to watch last week. The, I think the the Cowboys ran three plays in the first quarter. Um, Des Bryant, I I think it might be time to bump up Bryce Butler on the death chart over Des Bryant. Because at least Bryce Butler can get behind people. Des Bryant's brutal. He did make one of the best run after catches I've ever seen. He carried like three defenders, but... Two two catches for twelve yards isn't going to get it done. Um, it, you know, what's up with Mariota too? You know, like I, I don't know. I, he was a lot of hubbub about Mariota going into this year, um, being a top fantasy quarterback, a top tier QB. He went down with the injury in the um, what was the last game of the regular season last year? Um, it was Second late. Game. It was late in the yeah. year. I remember. I don't remember exactly when, but he like broke his leg, I believe. I drafted him, man. I drafted him because I have faith in him. Because if I'm if you're not taking Aaron Rodgers. Or Drew Brees or Tom Brady, then you're not drafted a quarterback for the first seven or eight rounds. And I was like, oh, I'll just get Russell Wilson and Mariota on the way back. And one of my leagues, some, somebody dropped Mariota in week two. So I picked him up. So I actually had Russell Wilson and Mariota. Now let me ask you something. I, actually, I'm going to ask you about this trade. I want to pull up. I went. Now, I'm already. Gonna, I'm obviously going to start Russell Wilson each week. I'm not going to start Mariota, but he's a nice backup QB. So somebody was saying they want, they want a QB1 and all of their wide receivers on the table. So I trade you straight up Mariota for Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders has been um, Trevor Simeon's favorite target. He got like, he got like 14 looks, I think, last week. Mm-hmm. So 
And I was struggling in the wide receiver spot because I have Dez, who's been underwhelming. I also had a... Uh, pulling up my team here. God, this music is... I just want... <laughs> this is tremendous. Yeah, so I have Diggs, Keenan Allen, Kelvin Benjamin, Marquise Lee, and A.J. Green in this league. And they're all... But they're all, like, pedestrian. A.J. Green, I thought, was going to be a stud. And Cincinnati is one of the worst teams in the league. Well, so, so far, right? He's going to get his numbers eventually. You would like to think so. Kelvin Benjamin, nothing for me. Nothing on the table here. How many receivers do you have to start? Um, two receivers and a flex. And you have A.J. Green. Yeah. Stephon Diggs. Yep. Kelvin Benjamin. Right. And who else? Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. Is this a PPR league? This is a PPR. Yeah, that's your money right there, dude. Is that Keenan Allen? Green, AJ Green, Stefan Diggs, and Keenan Allen. I'd, I'd rock those guys every week. Keenan Allen got like uh, gets, usually gets a lot of looks uh, or a lot of targets from Rivers every game. I think he leads that team in targets as long as he doesn't blow his knee out again. That's the other thing I'm really worried about. And the Eagles' um, secondary is not very good. I'm pretty sure based off of what I saw last week. So I uh, I have him starting in a couple of leagues this week, at like two or three. Keenan Allen, yeah. See, the thing about Diggs is, as long as he's a stud when Bradford's in the lineup, when Bradford's out, it's it's Thielen all day, bro. Yeah, I have Thielen. It's Wheelan, Dealen. Adam Thielen, yeah. Wheelan, Dealen, that, is, that, is that a thing? Has he done that? It could that's, be. That's Kiss, Thielen, Wheelan, Deal. Oh, it's, uh, it's got a Ric Flair promo all over it. Um, I mean, running backs in that league, I have LaShawn McCoy, again, who's drafted in the first round. Hasn't done much for me. Leonard Fournette, who I got around the bend, and Isaiah Crowell. So I, have, I don't have any, like, top, top-tier guys. I got a bunch of guys who are just, you know, right in the middle of the pack. However, I've been packaging uh, either Benjamin Sanders and Benjamin Allen, just trying to ship them around for a good RB1. Now, out of those guys, so I got A.J. Green, Diggs, Keenan Allen, Kelvin Benjamin, Marquise Lee, and Emmanuel Sanders. If I'm trying to package a deal to somebody, what yeah. two would you ship out? Well, I mean, it depends on what you're trying to get back. I, I want I mean, an RB1. If you want an RB1... I'd have to throw Keenan Allen in the mix, right? Probably. Yeah. I think you'd have to throw Keenan Allen in the mix. You know, Allen and one of the other guys. I mean, I don't think... I wouldn't trade Green or... or I wouldn't trade Allen and Diggs. That's too much, I would say. So I, maybe Allen and Diggs maybe for Kareem Hunt. That would be like yeah. That, but you know, like an elite. So RB1. like you could do like Allen and Sanders maybe for like a a mid level like RB one. I don't know who that would be, but I mean McCoy is is a, is a solid guy. He seems to you know start putting up. I mean he had a good first week, and then the last yeah. two weeks he hasn't he hasn't done a lot. He so. gave me some points last week because he PPR league, so he's you know, yeah. he's going to catch five or six. Goals. So he's he's a solid play every week as long as he's healthy. You just need somebody else, and whether it's we have Fournette and who is your other option? Uh, Crowell. Yeah, yeah Crowell's think. been rough. They give him the ball, but the Browns are so bad. I know people were kind of high on Crowell because he gets a lot of touches in the beginning. Of the That's year. why like, I, I was like so high because he he's their three down back. Yeah, I don't like to pick players on bad teams if I can avoid it. Usually, but yeah. I mean it's hard to. So I mean Fournette, we'll have to see. I mean he has the Jets this week. I don't know what to expect there. I mean Jai didn't do anything against the Jets last week, so I don't know if they're going to bottle him up. Or if uh, you know they're going to go back to being the Jets and you know, <laughs> yeah. um, he'll, he'll get a solid game. I don't. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So you're telling me right now I am shipping out. Let's just say Keenan Allen, and I, I want to get rid of Kelvin Benjamin. I'm close to dropping Kelvin Benjamin. Well, that's the thing. No, that's so. If you want to get somebody back, no one's going to right because Cam Newton kind of stinks now, from what I understand. I think he's just beaten. You know, yeah, so. Like, Physically. Benjamin's value is lowered based off of that. At least, like with Sanders, he's getting a lot of targets from Simeon, and it looks like Denver is going to be a decent team, as they have been so far. And Allen, while they're on, a, he's on a bad team. They're on an offense that's expected to be a little more high power than they've been. Right, and Rivers should, isn't afraid to chuck the ball. And Rivers is going to throw the ball, you know, a lot. So I would think that those two guys would be guys that, like, I, I would take. I don't know who I would be willing to give up for that, but um, you know. So you're saying I'm going to. Sanders, Sanders and Keenan Allen, are my, that's my package for an RB1, a mid, mid to high level RB1. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, are there guys that you're targeting to get from somebody? I really want Kareem Hunt or Dalvin Cook. That's probably, well, Hunt you won't get, I would say, but. I'd have to throw. Cook yeah. might maybe. Somebody would you go you. AJ Green trade off for, for a Kareem Hunt? When, which side of the deal am I on? You're the AJ Green side. You would do that, right? I'm giving up AJ Green yeah. to get Kareem Hunt? Yeah, I would do that. Do that. Especially in a PPR league. Yeah. If one stays healthy, they're just going to keep every week. Keep feeding them. Yeah. Push have Tyreek Hill, too, who's a tremendous wide receiver. So 
I, I'm, I also like Marquise Lee. Ever since Allen Robinson went down, he's been getting all the targets. Mm-hmm. But he's kind of Bortles' safety net. You know, Bortles just has to just has to get him the ball. That's all. I could literally listen to NFL primetime music all day. Do we have to end it? We have to end it. We have right? to end the segment at some point here. So, I could. Oh. Yeah, it's over. That was, man, that got really sad. On that note, um, man, I like talking football. Fantasy football is so good when you're. How are you doing your leagues, by the way? I'm all over the place. I have. I'm in six leagues, so it's hard to uh, you know. Man, that's tough. It's hard to gauge. But I have uh, two teams that are three and zero. Oh. I have one team that's two and one, and three teams that are one and two. So. But okay, we'll see. I'm three and zero, oh, two and one, two and one, one and two. So it's like I said, it's all over the place this year. Well, we appreciate you stopping by the all night long wrestling podcast, all night long football podcast. It should be <laughs> this week. Um, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram at all night long wp, Facebook dot com slash all night long wp. Um, where else can people check us out? Damage 365 Radio. Did you talk about that already? Damage 365 Radio Network. I did not talk about that already. We appreciate um, that. You got a lot of listens from Damage 365 last week. NAS is doing a lot of things over there. A lot of big things. A couple of conventions coming up. Uh, you know, I, I believe, rumor has it, there's a Survivor Series viewing party scheduled. I don't know if you saw that. I did. I wonder who's going to be there. You think we're going to be there? No. Probably not. I think it's in like Jersey or something. Also, we're not invited. So. <laughs> That's... That's brutal. I like the burial in the back end. Well, the back end burial. <laughs> That's right. Um, but again, we appreciate you checking us out. And uh, iTunes, like, subscribe. What is it? Like? No, you can't like it. You could subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. We appreciate that. We begged for those a couple weeks ago. Yeah, even our relatives don't do it. So if yeah. somebody out there could, that would be great. I'll send you a free shirt. Not like one of our shows. Like, I'll just, if you like. Something out of your closet, right? Uh, yeah. Sure. Like, since I'm moving, um, since I'm buying a house, I have like a ton of shirts now that I found that i never wear so i have like a cesaro shirt if you hold on here's what you do if you that was a gift what that was a gift wasn't it no not the not the red one okay not the red one from bk you can't be re-gifting no that's this that's a superman shirt no um i have a daniel bryan shirt here's what i'm gonna say if you like or if you uh review and rate our show on itunes and you take a picture and you send it to us I will give you a shirt. Fine print. You're going to have to come meet me somewhere. But I will give you a shirt literally off my back. I will wear it, sweat in it, take it off, and then give it to you. Think that'll get people to review? Nope. Didn't think so either. Well, thank you for checking out the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast. He is the Stallion. I am the Enforcer. And we're tapping out this week. It's really low. That's It is pretty low. Yeah. There she is. Nice.